Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and thank you very much to Simon and some others for birthday wishes today. Simon on his video earlier, so um, that was a nice surprise. Um, and uh, yeah, it is indeed my birthday, but nonetheless recording a video for you today and uh, just carrying on. We're delighted to do that. Um, and what I'm going to look at today is a puzzle by Just Curve. Now, last time I did a Just Curve puzzle, it was that extremely rare instance where I'm afraid I missolved it. Um, and we've been having emails even up until a couple of days ago saying, telling me I missolved it. Well, I, yeah, it was pointed out within about 20 minutes in the comments quite accurately that it was, uh, I'd written. Basically, I think I've got three and four swapped in in all three in in all their positions within boxes four, five, and six. And I then also compounded the mistake by using that solution as the official solution in the puzzle that we put up on the site. I did change that quite soon, but um, nonetheless, that will have confused people. And the best way to apologise to Just Curb, as well as explaining it, which we did, is to um, do another puzzle and Just Curb has sent us this puzzle called P Addict which features, well it's irregular Sudoku basically and a little bit of crop key. Uh, we'll be having a look at that in a moment. Um, very, well it's sort of irregular Sudoku, maybe it's extra region Sudoku. No, it's definitely irregular. Anyway, uh, we'll be looking at that in a moment and I'm looking forward to giving that a go and trying to finish it correctly this time. Now. If you finish correctly with the Tennis Anyone Sudoku Hunt by Glum Hippo and ourselves, then you will have the chance still to enter for another six days for a prize. So do join us on Patreon to have a go at that hunt. Um, there's also other content on Patreon. My crossword solve for the month is up there. Loads of stuff going on as always. And in the other links under the video, you can find Sven's Sudoku Pad, our merchandise, or find the way to all our apps, which of course include Domino Sudoku, now a full hundred puzzles in that app. And uh, this puzzle features a lot of those dominoes. So check it all out. But the first link is to this puzzle called P Addict because of the shapes of many of these regions. Um, so let me explain the rules. Now it's not normal Sudoku rules apply quite because there's no three by three boxes. Place one to nine in each row and column. Each marked region cannot contain a repeated digit. Now you will note that a lot of these regions have nine cells, but actually some of them only have three. Um, cells joined by a black dot contain digits in a two to one ratio. Cells joined by a white dot contain consecutive digits. Not all such dots may be marked, but that is the puzzle. Give it a try. Uh, you may be able to judge from the video length how hard it is. I'm hoping it's not gonna be a two or three hour video on my birthday, but we shall see. And um, let's get cracking. Time to start. So, I mean, the thing that I think we have to observe is that there are eight of these P-shaped regions. P or D or B or Q, I suppose. Um, And therefore, these other three cells form one extra region on their own. So this group of nine cells all have to be different. And that's because if you had nine sets of the digits one to nine, which you must have for every row and column in this puzzle, and you put eight of those sets into eight separate buckets, being these P regions, then you're left with one bucket of one to nine, and that's the yellow stuff. Oh, no, okay. The more important thing is the geometry. Right. Those three cells... Yeah, I mean, this is, this is basic set theory, isn't it? Compare column one, which has to be a set of the digits one to nine, with this region, which is also a set of the digits one to nine, and then eliminate these six common cells. That is going to mean that the contents of these three cells are also the contents of these three cells because they make up one to nine with those six cells in two different ways. Right, so let's not color these yellow and yellow. Let's color them all different. 
Okay, what I'm now going to remember is that yellow plus red plus blue is a set of nine. And look, these yellow, I can move them along. With those six, they form a set of nine, just as those three cells do. So those must be yellow. They form a set of one to nine with those six, just as those three do, so they are yellow. They form a set of one to nine with those six. I love this, and it's not going to continue because I've now got all three yellow digits in each of rows one, two, and three, so that is going to stop. However, it carries on down here. These are yellow because they go with these, oops, with these six to make a set of one to nine, just as these do. Oh, I see. Now I can determine that these are blue because in this column there are three yellow, three red, and three blue. They're all, they're all three sets of the digits. I may be able to color this whole grid in these colors. Yes, look, blue goes with those six to make a set of one to nine. So it also goes with those six to make a set of one to nine in the column. So those are blue. Then these are blue because those six are the complementary set. That's weird. Um, now, is that all I can do? Or do I start using the dots now? Oh, well, these... Oh, lovely. These see three lots of yellow. So they can't be yellow. Now, what I'm saying there is that, say yellow are the digits one, four, and seven. Then they appear here once, here once, and here once. And they must be disposed so that there's a one, four, seven in each row, one, each of rows one, two, three. So these can no longer be yellow. Once you have three yellows in a row, nothing else can be yellow. Now we know these aren't blue because they're in the same box as those blue, so they're red. Now these must be yellow because every column is made up of three reds, three yellows, and three blues. And I suspect they're going to be in these stripes all the way. Um, now those could be yellow, so I, I can't be clear yet there. These can't be yellow in this set or blue because they're in this region, so they're red. So these are yellow. Oh, where the other yellow set go in the central rows? I don't see where it can go. Oh, it goes here. There we go. Yes, that's fine. So that's yellow. That's red. Now we've got the three reds in the top rows. These two are blues. Those are reds. These are reds for the columns. Are they in the same region as something else? Do I get stopped at that point? Okay, let us think about these now. This is great. This is a two or a four. This is either a set of one, two, four, or two, four, eight. Ah, and there's a, yellow, there's a white dot in yellow. This can't be two, four, eight, because yellow has to include two digits that are consecutive, so one of them must be odd. So this is a one, two, four set. This must be a one, two pair. In fact, we know the order because of the two. We get a four here, that sorts out these. Suddenly I'm gonna get digits in the grid. I think this puzzle might, well, I don't know. I was gonna say it might unfold fairly rapidly at some point, maybe not yet. But this black dot has to have a two on it. It's either a one, two pair or a two, four pair. Now, red includes, oh, hang on, what's this? Black dot with a four that's not one or two. That is an eight. So eight is included in red. Well, so must seven be. This is either a sequence of eight, seven, six, or nine, eight, seven then. So eight and seven are both red digits, along with either six or nine. So one of these is a seven. I see, and it's going to be strategically placed, placed white dots that figure out... Oh, blue has got a black dot in, and it doesn't involve one, two, four, eight, or seven. So that black dot is a three, six pair. And now six isn't in red. Oh, that's lovely. So this is a seven, eight, nine set. 
Let's get rid of all the markings. Just put eight in the middle and a seven, nine pair flanking it. Right, so there's no six there. So red is seven, eight, nine. Yellow is one, two, four. And blue must be three, five, six. So let's fill in all of that as three, five, six. Red is seven, eight, nine. Ah, I can see two, three useful dots between red and blue there, there, and there. They must all be joining sixes to sevens, I suppose. Yeah, they've got to be, they've got to be, that's, that's clear. Then we can finish off some of these, some of these red cells. Um, not these two, and not those blues. Ah, I can finish off that. So this is an eight, that's a nine, this is a seven. That's a nine, this is an eight. Lovely, isn't this clever? Now, what's this blue and yellow joined together by a white? Well, the yellow is two or four and the blue is three or five. So, and also, yes, I can do one, two, four. Ooh, ooh. Okay, there's, there's interesting stuff going on up here. No, I'll tell you what, there's quite interesting stuff going on between there and there. Oh no, hang on. I was literally about to write in this as a triple blue. But I haven't established a case that you couldn't have blue and red alternating down this sequence. Just because we found it in strips of three so far doesn't mean that has to continue, I don't think. Well, I'm not sure. I don't see why yet. So let's look at these. This is a three, five pair. So these both have to be even to join by white dots to them. So that's the two, four pair. This is one. This one is, has got to be even as well. So now that's a two, four pair and that's a sequence. So that's flanking a three. <laughs> that's clever. Five must um, be consecutive to four and they are unwind. Get one in the corner. Um, then we get three and five, three, five, six there. Right. Um, what about this then? This digit is three or five. It can't be yellow. And it's not six, or obviously seven. That is three or five, and it is therefore blue. This one is consecutive with three or five, but can't be yellow. So that has got to be six. Yeah, it's got to be. So that's five, that's four now. Ah, that's going to do it. Is it? No, it's going to do a little of it, um, of the yellow down here. Nearly finished all the yellows. Just got three pairs left to do. Ah, and one, this can't be a one touching a two. That has to be a two touching a three. And look, we are getting these stripes again, very unsurprisingly, I suppose. But it was something we still had to prove, and we have done it now. That's a three, five, six. Oh, three in the corner. Losing its religion. Then we've got an eight, nine pair down here, which are red. Now, whatever this is, it's nine or eight connecting to it. And seven, eight, nine are all red. So that's red. This is red, actually, to make up the count. And in fact, we can make up the count in all of these rows because there's three blue strips. So now I can make up the counts in these columns with blue and in this one with red. And we're very nearly finished, actually, now. Eight, seven, nine. I've just got this one white dot, I think, to resolve. Three, five, six here. So that's a six joining to a seven. It's got to be. Uh, yes, these can finish now. Three, five, six, three and five, three, six. All the blues are done, just some reds to go. This one, eight has to be on this white dot because it needs an even digit. So that has to be a nine suddenly. That puts eight in the corner. And there we go. That is a clever puzzle. I mean, it's not very difficult. That's only taken 
11 and a half minutes, but there's some really nice stuff going on there. I don't think you could do that without identifying the three strings of digits that are essential and stripe the puzzle, but equally, it's, it's a little bit intricate to do that and then quite easy after that stage. The perfect puzzle for my birthday in many ways and the perfect one maybe to apologize to Just Curb for my error on his previous puzzle. Um, thank you for watching as always. We'll be back with more tomorrow and I hope to see you then. Bye for now.